not going to sing the rest because it might be racist. So I'm not going to do that. So, <laughs> I'm not singing their lyrics. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's don't how want to get copyright strike, man. And I won't want that either. So that's how we start the show. <laughs> What is up, everybody? My name is Sebastian Sierra, and welcome to another episode from the series The Road to Fast 9 here on Out of the Movies. I'm back here with Andrew Stettel. Yes, sir. And Henry Washington. Yo, what's up? <laughs> and today we're doing the third movie, which is, is this a, a sequel? Is this a reboot? Whatever the hell this is. We're in the third movie, of course, The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drifts, with no one coming back. No one decided to come back. I read like no one decided to come back for this movie. So they had to get new cast members and they decided to go like, let's go to Tokyo, you know, let's do something else. We're staying in the US for the, uh, these past two movies. Let's change it up a little bit. And of course, we got a new director, which of course, Justin Lin, who will be a staple of this franchise. I mean, he's coming directly for this latest movie. So he's a big part of this franchise. and. As we've seen this movie, we can tell why. So, a new team member, new production, new cast members. This is something that was, again, interesting because my experience with this movie, I remember like back when this came out, I was still not a fan of the movies. I was not into them yet. I'm not a gearhead. And so this one, when I saw a little bit of the movie, just didn't look appealing to me because this movie has this, like this, this darker, great look to it. It's, it's very dark, almost the whole movie. So it just looked boring. I I wasn't attracted to the, the, the protagonist. He looked kind of boring to me. He looked bland. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know about this guy. I'm like, all right, this franchise is still not for me. So I'll just skip it until finally when I got into the franchise, I'm like, all right, I guess I need to catch up with all these movies. So I finally saw them and I saw it for like two or maybe three times, but like very sporadically and it never grasped onto me that much. But maybe this time it'll change up a little bit. I don't know. I won't spoil it. But wh what about you, Henry? Like, what's your experience with Tokyo Drift? Like, how's this been for you? Um, I think. Let's see, this was 2006. So I, I think I think I did see this in the theaters, just like the second one. I think the first one's probably the only one I. Well, actually, no. I think I saw the first one in the, in the theaters, but it's. Um, I've seen this movie a bunch of times because just like the second movie, it played on TV a lot. I think it was because it didn't do, I don't think it did as well. <laughs> so no. they played it, you know, try to get, <laughs> try to get that money back. So I've seen it a bunch of times and it's been a while since I've seen this one. And it didn't hold up as well as I remember. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. What about you, Andy? Like, what's your experience with this movie? How you felt before us? I remember, you know, if you can remember this thing called Black, Blockbuster. My parents rented <laughs> it for me. A Blockbuster, you know. Wow. This thing called a video store, kids. Oh my god. Uh, I remember this is one of those ones I watched. I rewatched it quite a bit as a kid. I really loved it. Um, <laughs> watching this as an adult is a little different, and I, I really had a lot of fun with this one. Actually, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think what what I the attachment I had to this one was I was really into Need for Speed Underground at the time, and this yeah. movie definitely. Mm -hmm definitely like brought out that side of me a little bit when i watched oh, yeah. it again <laughs> it has that vibe of need for speed or what's that rockstar game like the street racing I forgot the name of it uh that that, that kind of what the, the hell is the name of that i forgot that I oh forgot. midnight club midnight yeah, yeah midnight club. exactly midnight, midnight club yeah it, it looks straight up like midnight club so like it has that appeal for a lot of people and i will say this movie has has the most racing out of the whole franchise even even so far this is the most racing I think even since then, it has the most reason. So, like, the people that love that stuff, this is your movie. So, I don't know. I This one, this, I, I saw this, watched it recently before hopping in here. And, man, I, I really enjoyed this movie. Kind of like, like you said, I, I won't spoil exactly, like, my full exact feelings. But I really, really enjoyed this movie. But, man, just to, like, like I said, like, just some quick facts. Like, again, this movie was actually filmed in Tokyo, which I was I was doubting, like, is this movie actually filmed in Tokyo? Or are they kind of redressing some oh, stuff? No, but, like, no, it definitely is. <laughs> no, it, it definitely like is Tokyo. And apparently, like, they actually filmed this movie illegally. <laughs> like, they're not, they didn't have any purpose oh? to film this in Tokyo. <laughs> so just as... It kind of feels like, that way. <laughs> 
Justin was like, fuck it, we gotta film this shit. And like, dude, they, even to the point, they actually had a fall guy. So like, if, if, in case the cops show up to kind of break the set, like, they, if there's a fall guy, they're like, yeah, I'm the director, I'm the writer, and they're arrested. They actually arrested that guy once. I'm like, holy shit, like that? I don't know how they did it, but they did it. So like, that is so cool. Like that, that I really, really like that stuff. And obviously, there's some stuff. And like, uh, the writer, I think this writer for the movie stay on for all the way till seven, I think. So this is, yeah. So like, so this is the this is the first one that's kind of changing up the formula a little bit because you know Justin Lin and the writer have been in the same movies ever since this one up to seven, I think. And there's more stuff I'll bring on later on, but. Man, I, I just from the get go, this movie, I thought it was funny. This high school, man, what the fuck is this high school? <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's like it's filled with like deviants, racists, because we see a scene where these jocks are beating up this pinata of the Native American. I was like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, that, that, that was, something. yeah, I was like, what the hell? I mean, okay, they're like a football team, I guess, like whatever they're called, like uh, Rachel Slur or whatever mm. for Native Americans. But I was like, and they're beating the shit out of this Native American piñata. Like, oh my god, okay, that is. And people are rooting for it, like, yeah. I would have been like, this is, <laughs> this is a weird school, <laughs> but like, yeah, they have like deviants and races, like teachers who do not care because they're sleeping in the shop and letting p- kids get tortured by other students. <laughs> like, I was like, what? The hell? That was so ridiculous. That was so ridiculous. And I metal. I mean, there's metal detectors yeah. in the entrances before you go to school. Like, this was like a. They're shit checking the show, fucking man. mascot. <laughs> oh my god! Dude, I'm, I'm like, what? I don't know, man. I don't got no drugs. <laughs> and it's also filled with people that are over thirty because. No one in this school oh, yeah. looks like oh, yeah. six, 17 or under. What the shit? Grown ass <laughs> men. Grown ass Despite people. the fact that the movie, the movie's like, oh, they're 17. Oh, before your 18th birthday. And I'm like, oh, mother. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no way. Like, this no guy's way. been paying his taxes for years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, no. look as black. I, Sometimes when I see him, I'm like, okay, I can see that he may look like 17, but sometimes, sometimes not. Occasionally. But sometimes he looks like, no, nah, like 30 and up, dude. Like, nah, man. Come, no, 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 no. You're not even 20. Like, no, there's no way. <laughs> like, there's, I don't know how old he was in this movie, like the actor, but I was like, nah. Pretty on, young, man. I think. Pretty much, but I don't think he, he just looked like, old, I guess. <laughs> he looks super old. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Even uh the guy from Home Improvement uh, was in this in this movie, like super <laughs> old. He looked, he looked like about 30 years old. Like, come on, you're not 17. Like, no one here is 17. So I was like, that, that's just fucked up. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess this school is almost like a comment to the actual school system, you know, because some schools are pretty fucked up. I don't know, it's like to this level, but I, I, just from the get go, like, okay, this movie is interesting, and like you said, Andrew, we kind of like talked about this earlier about the soundtrack of this movie. Just from the beginning of this movie, I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh shit, this song's pretty cool," and it kept Actually, going on. One, one of the songs. One of the songs at the end, the in the end credits, is actually a song from Need for Speed because I recognize the song. Oh shit! You mean like, uh, like right when the cre- right when the credits come roll up? Yeah, it's like it's a one of the songs from. Oh, uh, because actually, like round two. Like Andy, you, you mentioned me like, oh, like Don Omar's in this movie. I was like, Don Omar's on the soundtrack. Of you, you, I think you're thinking of the next one, but no, right like, at the end, right at yeah, the end, right at the end. Right yeah, at the I end. was like, oh, they played like two <laughs> songs from him, like straight, like back to back. I'm like, oh shit, like this is like, like brings back memories. Like holy shit, this is awesome. So, like again, <laughs> this movie's weird because they still objectify women, not as much as the first two movies, especially the first one. But this movie, I mean that. The, bu- the bully's girlfriend, Oof. Clay's girlfriend. Oh my lord! I mean, once she says like, yeah. "The winner gets me," I'm like, "Oh, okay." I thought sure, you loved me, <laughs> right? like, Which dude. Oh not? my god, she's the worst girl, dude. She's a total asshole. Like she was like, "Oh, I mean, she's my girl," and she's like, mm, "I don't know, like this Sean, this Sean guy's pretty hot, or whatever." And then she's constantly on his ass to make sure he wins, but at the same time, she's also flirting with him, with a Sean. I'm like. Damn, dude, and, <laughs> I can't believe it. And at the end, Sean still wins, and she's still like unimpressed. I'm like, whatever, you you made me crash. I'm like, this is all your, this is really your fault. This, they're doing this before for you. I mean, they're all the reasons why they're racing, but I'm like, damn, you, that was also weird. It was also weird. It's like these are all 17 year olds, and this seemed like before they race, like <laughs> girls who takes her bra off. I'm like, that's weird. Like these are 
seven underage people, right? That's okay, whatever. <laughs> that was, I don't know, that was weird, but and those were different back then. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but like I think the first race was really fun. I really like that first race of I was filmed. Oh my god, I can tell Justin Slim is a very I don't know if he's a better director, but he knows how to do action very well. Because every, every shot looked cool, crisp, and clean. Nothing was sh- too much shaky. I can see what's going on. On, like, the first times on the first two movies, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, and here, I'm like, okay, that looks pretty cool. I mean, the race gets a little ridiculous at, at some point when they drive off oh, a cliff, sure. the side of a cliff. Or, or like driving, a ramp. Through, <laughs> driving through a house. <laughs> through a can house. I get a tape of that? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the fuck? the hell out of here he's so but, like, happy about that <laughs> oh he was so happy about this movie it's like <laughs> what i liked about sean so far in this movie he's like all right he's a troubled kid he's a hot-headed guy but he's also pretty cocky and he just loves getting in trouble like he, it's like he just loves doing racist stuff he looks he's always you know people are bullying him but he's never down he's always like he wants that coffee like come on bring it in like you guys don't have anything against me i'll beat the shit out of you like, i got a wrench in my hand like don't fuck with me, okay? So that I like, uh, like from the get go, it's like okay, this is a different guy. He's not the typical like almost oh, nerdy schlub. Like oh, don't let bully me. He's like no, fuck you guys. Like I can be in this tough environment. Like I can be against you guys. And hey, I actually people actually like me because he's not like completely. He's an outcast of some sorts, but people still like him. People think he's cool. So I really liked him. And again, like <laughs> like how he arrested him and the cops are flirting with his mom. Like get the hell. Man, like the, the <laughs> that, was that was so ridiculous Officer, and, can i smoke in here yeah right. there's a no smoking sign literally right there <laughs> right it's like right behind in me frame. Like, sure. it's like, it's like man this is sure. this is 2006 like right no you like, can't whatever. smoke in here <laughs> yeah you can't smoke in here but he's like whatever sure you can smoke i guess because i you're hot okay and i also thought it was funny how you see like in the precinct there's like a nun behind the kids like just conveniently there like why is really? there a nun yeah there was like a nun oh, behind them <laughs> oh like, yeah why is she there I remember this <laughs> i was like okay this this is a interesting precinct but man but see, I don't it's know. about family my son it's, it's about family because <laughs> i guess he's there to symbolize like hey you have redemption you can be redeemed i guess but i, I dude it's just funny how this kid man i don't know how many troubles he's been before but he still has the opportunity to move to different cities, man. Like, apparently he has the opportunity, like, hey, yeah. you can go to another country if you want to. I mean, how would you guys feel if you guys were sent to another country, another city, you can't have a, any choice. You're like, you just have to. Like, you get, you're sent to Japan. Like, you guys Tokyo, have to. yeah. <laughs> Tokyo? I mean, Tokyo looks cool. It's Tokyo, I, sure, dude. I'd be like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> but it's like, at 17, I'd be like, oh, man, this is too much for me right now. Oh, like, bad. No. 17 year old Andrew would be in heaven. He loved anime back then. He'd be like, Woo! <laughs> what about you, Harry? Would this be a too much of a change for you? Like, you're a completely different culture, different environment. Like, would you be okay uh, with that? That'd be all right. I mean, I, you know, just like Andy said, I've watched a lot of anime, so I feel like I would have figured, figured things out a bit. I mean, <laughs> I probably would have had a little more trouble than. than um, <laughs> I already forgot what the main character's name is, but oh, Sean I had more trouble. Sean, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's a little bit of trouble. His shoes. Oh yeah, you know, a white guy like that. <laughs> that was a little funny, actually. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty funny. A little. No, that was. I was actually really like. No, no, also, change that. <laughs> also, I forgot to ask you. I was like, "What do you guys think of the first race? Did you guys actually enjoyed this little? It's it's a short little race, but you guys you guys like this or fun? Yeah, it was despite it was the cool. weird things that go on. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, dude! Like I don't know how the hell Sean survived that back, like that constant flip. His car is completely destroyed. He's fine. Like oh, he has a little bit of mm-hmm. a little bit of blood, but he's fine. I think we, they saw yeah, like a little okay. bottle of Tabasco like floating around. I was like, that's <laughs> yes, Tabasco rolling on his car. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, oh, that's cool. But it's like you, you, you had me believe that he used hot sauce. I don't think so. <laughs> He really loves the shit. I don't know. But I was like, it's so funny. Like, he has a, exactly a little awesome. bottle, and they focus on the bottle, like, slow motion. Like, because there's a, already, like, Justin Liz making a little bit of stylistic choices here, like, from the races. But, like, there's some cool transitions. Like, when they we focus on him on the wall, he's like, oh, you're going to their city. And then it pans out. He's on the plane already 
all the way to Japan. Yeah, like, oh, that's that was cool. that was really cool. Yeah, I was like, I really like yeah, that. Yeah, that's like the same oh, thing I watched it. That was mm-hmm. really well done. So I I like this stuff. And again, we meet uh, his dad. It was I, I kind of like the dad. That was pretty cool. I mean, there's some stuff at the end. I'm I like, it... No, go ahead. Is is a little crazy but you know i i thought yeah. that having a dad in his life kind of worked a little bit like you know he had somebody to go off to and then i love how he's just like eh, screw you dad i'm not gonna live here no more <laughs> just like but dad he's not completely terrible i mean by the end i have some different things to say about the dad but I mean, he's not oh, yeah. completely reckless i mean yeah he gets there and he's with a woman already he's like oh i thought you're coming about the seventh i'm like oh so like he's not completely responsible because you know he does say they're a day forwards, they're a day ahead, so it's not his fault. So it's his mom's dad, his fault for sending him too early. But like, now, I now that could have been his date. That could have been his date, right? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I, I, the dad stuff is kind of cool. I did like their. I mean, we don't really see the relationship that much, but the times we do see him, like okay, that's kind of cool. Like you know, this is dad, mm-hmm. like this kid who's who's misguided. He's, he doesn't have a sense of direction, but his dad's trying to but man like dude how many times has sean is doesn't go back home and doesn't call him i mean this is i, th- I think he doesn't have a cell phone back yeah. then yet but his dad has never worried about him he, i mean does worry about him he's never like trying to look for him like what the hell's my son like he, he's just like yeah it's, you know it's what, once it's, yeah this one's like you know what time it is. <laughs> the other time it's like oh well, i'm not okay. coming back <laughs> yeah he sounds like uh yeah i'm not coming back oh, whatever he just talks to the, the girl it's like okay like, so his dad is almost there, but he's pretty absent for most of it. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But I did like the like the house. The house looks pretty nice. It's too small for me. Oh, but yeah. Totally. The house looks super, super nice. But I I remember <laughs> it's funny how once he goes to the high school, I, I like the, the uniform he has to wear. It's pretty funny. But of course, the one classroom he goes to, there's already someone that speaks English, you know, this is not Asian. So like, wow, you got lucky, dude. Like if you <laughs> Like, I would have probably got to a classroom with no one that speaks English. I would have been like, uh, I don't know. I'm pretty confused. And I don't know how Sean got lucky. Sean got lucky. I don't know how he, he made that <laughs> that first day alive. I mean, of course, we made the character Twinkie, who's also there for whatever reason. He's in that school. I mean, all right. What is Twinkie about? Like, what does he do? I know he sells some iPods and some computers, but we don't really know much about <clears throat> what is he up to like we just see we don't see any parental figure like what is he doing I mean, yeah, Japan? That's true. <laughs> I mean Bow Wow did the best that he could with the role he did the best he could with it yeah I, really for what he was written oh yeah he barely had much to do but I really did like him I guess it's the third movie with a rapper in the movie like little Bow Wow I guess well, I, was, he, was he still? That's true. <laughs> that is true. Like, was yeah. he still little Bow Wow, right? Or was he Bow Wow? This uh, I think he was transitioning at this time. Yeah, he was there. I think that so, was. He was there. I. This is the. <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna talk about no one looking like seventeen, I kind of bought him as a seventeen-year-old or even sixteen-year-old because he looked pretty damn young. I was like, okay, I guess maybe it's only a stature, but he kind of looks fresh face, young face. I'm like, okay, I can kind of see him be in high school. But I, I really, because again, Twinkie's weird. Because after that scene that we meet him, he shows him this garage with this super expensive car, this Hulk car. Let's talk about that car for a little bit. Because once he <laughs> showed up that car, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> they don't really explain why it's a Hulk car. They don't explain that he likes Hulk. Hold, hold on. It's, it's We're not talking car. about that cool elevator part where like the yeah, thing like, the... shows every car yeah it shows every car <laughs> and it shows that one. whole car <laughs> i was like okay I, I don't know how you afford this car i mean i guess because he's involved with yakuza a little bit yeah, i don't know either or, or whatever Cause... i guess you don't know who he's involved with he's involved with different people I don't know driving driving a car in japan is expensive as, as oh as really so, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so it's like having a car in general is a, is a, is a lot of money. So having a, a, a car with a lot, bunch of stuff done to it, it's like. It, it's know, it's so odd. Because <laughs> like, as, as we see, because for the movie, he's like, what is this? What is this business? I mean, we do see him later on. He sells an iPod. It's like, oh, okay. So he sells some technology, some little tech stuff. I'm like, that's cool. We also see him. I don't know if he's doing some side deals with the races. I don't know. I'm like, what is? I guess. Oh, like, what he is has he money, doing? clearly. Yeah, he has a lot of money, yeah. and he also has no parental figures. He's always outside of the school and every race at night, staying late with Han. 
I'm like, okay, this is, I don't know what he's up to, but it's cool. I like the car. It's ridiculous, but all right. He likes Hulk for whatever reason. That's pretty cool. I liked it. Uh, but also, like, <laughs> all right, this is when things get also kind of weird because I know the laws in Japan are different than here in the United States and the Western side of the world, but it's still kind of weird how DK, who is the villain of the movie, wants and is with a 17-year-old. I thought I found that pretty weird. He was very, like, I want her. Like, don't, don't touch my girl. I'm like, well, I mean, like, it, it, even Han tell them, like, dude, like, you're still holding out to school girls? Like, come on. I thought you are going up in the world. I know, right? It's like, so, like what the I hell? Totally missed, I totally was not thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> the so movie weird. brings it up, so I'm forced to think about it. Yeah, it's so weird. It. Sorry, and then no. I was like, oh, maybe is he also a 17-year-old? Because we never see him in the school. We see his henchman no. in the school mm-hmm. later on but we never mm-hmm. see him in school no. <laughs> so oh, there's no. a it, it's like, oh. <laughs> right no it's oh, heavily it's implied <laughs> so no. like, that's weird but again i know the laws are different so maybe in japan it's like okay it's not weird but still for me like moralistically it's weird i'm like this that's all and han is also pretty cool about it. he's like eh, all right you're dating a school girl that's whatever I'm like, oh, Han, come on, man. I thought you were better than this. But <laughs> that, that was weird. But, man, uh, let's just say Han is cool. I really love Han. Han is one of, of, one of the best characters. Or the best yeah, character I mean, he's in this whole movie. Best character in the movie. Man, I, yeah. I love him. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but he was also a character from a Justin Lin movie before this movie came out. He's an actual – they took him from that movie hmm. to here. I think it's called Better Luck Tomorrow. So, which is weird because I, I read a little bit of synopsis. I think he was supposed to be in America, you know, there's some illegal stuff. So I guess it kind of makes sense to what's happened later on chronologically. But I was like, hmm. okay, cool. So he bring Han into yeah. this movie. That's pretty cool. But man, I, I really like them. I love how he gave Sean the opportunity to race the car. He's like, eh, I want to see what he got. Like, drive my car. I'm like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, Han's, Han's just cool. Han is just so cool because he's a guy. I- like you, you kind of know what he's about. <laughs> like he wants money, but he's just a guy who's so chill. He's not chill. He's just like he's just coasting through life. I'm like, whatever happens, I'm cool. I just want money. That's all I want. <laughs> what do you think about Han, Andy? I love Han, but I real quick before we get into that, I I just couldn't stop laughing because you were like, oh, here's the car. As he proceeds yeah. to fuck up the car. Oh my god, that's exactly what I was laughing at too. <laughs> I'm like, no, don't do that to him. Don't do that. No, Not only his car, but like other people's cars. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah total total damage. <laughs> I, but I, man, I I love that scene. Like, again, the racing, the racing here is actually cool. It's one of the things that I didn't really love in the first two movies, but in here, I really like that stuff. Like, going, because again, they bring this new element to kind of change up a little bit instead of going through, oh, just go back and forth in this race and the street. Like, no, we're actually going doing loops and loops or doing drifting you know which i don't know when drifting came about but i think this is around when drifting was in i guess so people were all about that shit i think it's like i think it's a cultural thing in japan i don't know if i'm mistaken maybe correct me that if i'm wrong it is but oh, it is right so i mean the, i mean the stunts man the, the the way they do the stunts in here it looks so cool it's mostly practical there's only one scene they use special effects when they kind of do a zoom in and on the back of a car he's about to scrape the wall but other than that, it's completely practical. The crashes are real. I like how DK's kind of an asshole. He's just like waiting for him, like, get over here. I'm like, oh shit. And Sean's like, man, I'll get you. And so that was cool. But the best stunt, I think the best stunt of this movie is doing that drift around like the, the side of the parking lot. That was cool. Like, oh shit. Like that, that looks real. And that is, I think that is pretty real. Like when he's about to go to the finish line, I'm like, oh shit, that looks. Pretty awesome. Oh, of course, yeah. that yeah. was so badass. Of course, Sean's fucks it up. He fucks the whole car. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. I generally yeah. laugh that seems like, oh, <laughs> just scrapes around the side of it. But I, I really like that whole racing scene. And, and they finally answered my question of how do people watch these races? Because again, the first movie, they kind of see the racing from the far away. Like, oh, I guess Brian O'Connor won. Okay, that's cool. But in here, they kind of do show how they watch the, the races because they, they flip, they film it through these flip phones. I don't oh, know how they watch so it. But they, is it <laughs> I mean, it's not even HDs. I don't know how they watch it on standard definition. Like, 
again, it's kind of pixelated, but okay, who won? Oh, <laughs> okay, I so guess cool. I guess DK won. He must have won, right? Because he is the winner. He's a draft. He's a drifting mm-hmm. king. But I don't know. At least they kind of explain that stuff. But, oh, by the way, there's some scenes like I thought it was pretty funny. Like well, that scene where Bow Wow gets into the, the elevator and you look at straight at the camera like <laughs> I got all these women. What's up? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, God, come on, it's like, man. stop looking at the camera. Yeah, stop looking at the camera, man. You broke the fourth floor. I'm like, come on, pal. We don't, you don't need this shit right here. What are you going to say, Andy? Well, well, first of all, to go on that, back like back in the day, dude, like Bow Wow was totally a ladies' man. So like when he did that, I was like, yeah, that's a Bow Wow thing. Yeah. But also, I was going to say the elevator thing. That's another way that they also watch the races. Somehow they have elevators with technology that can immediately get to the next floor right. when they get up there. <laughs> right, and that's they the somehow elevator. also have so what is that? Stuff technology that somehow they can watch the race like on Skype or something from every right or like, I'm like yeah, yeah, I don't know how are we doing like, this. Yeah, how are we doing this? Like Skype wasn't a thing. I mean, we don't have Zoom yet. Like, what is this? Like, what are they watching through? Like. I don't know, some kind of connect. Maybe an Excel? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, uh, okay. There's some, at least they're kind of explaining it to me how they're watching because, again, they're on different floors around the parking lot. So I'm like, how are they watching this race? But I don't know. The whole race I thought was super well done. I really like that stuff. And of course, I love that Sean fucked his car up completely. So that's how he gets wrapped up with this whole criminal underground world. I mean, holy shit. This is, we forget, this is a high school kid. 17 years old he's involved in this criminal deadly shit like yakuza man yakuza not not just any gang it's the yakuza so I'm like okay this is cool like we kind of forget also this is can we consider this also like a high school movie it's kind of like a high school movie right kind of sort of they right? try to make it that <laughs> they kind of try to make it that like halfway through the movie, they kind of drop that shit. Like, no, this is a this is a completely Fast and Furious criminal movie. It just happens to have a kid in it, yeah. but or like, but I, I really like it. Like, oh, these it's like this is kind of from the high school angle because we do after that we do see him back in high school again. I really like that stuff. Like everybody's laughing about. It. I'm like, oh man, they got a fucked up Han's car. Like, mm-hmm. oh, but I love how yeah. no one questions Han parked in front of the high school. <laughs> Just standing there <laughs> waiting for Sean. I'm like, bro, come on, call the police, man. Like, what is he doing there? Like, yeah, no, it's a no nice car. Come on. <laughs> it's a cool car. He has a no, it's like, dude, what the fuck? Like, what I are keep you? going getting older. I keep right. on staying the same age. Oh, no. Man. Hard is sometimes hard is like, hmm, questionable, Han. Uh, questionable. But okay. I mean, right, you're not DK, you're not with underage people. Although, in one movie, he does say, like, Hey, leave him alone. He's underage. I'm like, all right. So at least he brought that up. But uh, even though in that scene, dude, when they go to the club, that was still kind of weird. It's like all these models all yeah. over Bow Wow, this 16 or 17 year old kid. Yeah, as they proceed oh, to have Bow Wow all, all over him. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, this is oh, so weird. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not underage, ladies. <laughs> right? I, mean, I, I get Sean is apparently so cool. That even women are like, oh, Sean is so fucking hot, man. He's like, like who's this white kid i'm like okay all right, all right. people love him like everywhere in the country but that yeah that was that was weird because even i think to yeah. explain how he kind of runs these events with like models because like they it was this whole spiel like oh what models what are they gonna do they, they don't know the country they want to know they want to also ha- want to have fun so they go through mm-hmm. me this short small kid who's funny I'm like i don't know how you do that but somehow you do things <laughs> okay that's cool yeah. but question because again what you said oh because i was gonna say that the high school thing it made me watch this it reminded me if you watch an anime called initial d and it's about drifting it's an anime about drifting and a lot of the kids are in high school at least in the first few seasons so i think that's probably why they decided to make this kind of high school to kind of make that connection to be like oh because it's a very popular anime like um so i think that's kind of why they Maybe he did that in the beginning. Was like, okay, we had these high school kids, you know, they're drifting <laughs> in Japan. So it's like, if you like this, you know, anime, you might like this movie, oh, you know. But okay. then, like, like you said, like they just they just dropped it. They just dropped yeah, it. Yeah, right. right. They just dropped it halfway. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 we well, got I, you now. <laughs> right, we got you now. Because I do, I do like how the movie started again by seeing this perspective of high school. Because you know, the first two movies are all about these adults, you know, cops, criminals, and shit like that. So. Starting with a high schooler, like, oh, that's kind of cool. I really like 
that whole angle and it's pretty relatable at least for me because i'm like all right i mean we, we can all relate to a high school kid than dominic toretto or brian o'connor who's like this super cop you know like at least sean is more le- relatable in that sense and i also i'll talk about more sean later on but i i really i, I don't know i like sean a lot but i also i i don't know i never lived japan so people from if you people if you live in japan or you're from japan let me know but apparently if your car is super fast the cops will let you go the cops won't even try to get you because <laughs> Han, because you know they went through they sped through a cop and the cop didn't do anything and Han, sean's like what the fuck and Han's like yeah yeah man like it, it, those, car, those cars are factory made if you go over 180 kilometers per hour they won't even try to get you so i'm like damn this is what kind of city is this you can drive as fast as you can and you won't get any speeding tickets you'll be fine i don't know i guess i want to live there too like I, <laughs> they won't get me for speeding so that's cool but uh again we see a little bit more about like han stuff i i really i don't know like again like han's pretty cool guy but it's like he's into some deep bad shit like what is he up to he's a cool guy but he's also don't fuck with Han, man don't fuck with han because he will fuck you up i think he's he's one of those guys like you think he's school he's very cool you can like oh you can trust him but like don't don't be too cool with him because i don't know if you fuck him one time he can get you in one way i don't know i i wouldn't completely trust him to be completely good with you but um i i like uh, the scene where like Neela explains her backstory. Oh, Neela is also you know, a love interest. Uh, they explain the whole like the, <laughs> the backstory of her life while they're also drifting around the sides of like I don't know this, this, the mountainside Japan, and they're making it look like it's like a flock of like grazing gazelles, you know, going slowly, go- gracefully around this mountainside while she's driving and explaining her backstory. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's ridiculous. But all right, I, I, cheesy. But I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's cheesy, but it's kind of sweet. I don't know. I, I like it. Like whatever. It's ridiculous. But I, I, at some point, at one point in this movie, I, like, again, it's not a high school movie anymore. It becomes a yakuza movie at one point because that scene between DK and his uncle. That's straight up from like a yakuza movie. I was like, dude, did we just switch movies right now? Like, what, what is going on? Like, it's completely Apparently. Japanese. I was like, I loved it. I was like, I was like, I'm in. I don't care what's going on right now. I'm completely in. I'm sucked into this whole crime family story. I'm like, okay, this is pretty badass. I, I, I don't know. I like it. And I also, oh, we also see the training montage stuff. I really like that stuff. I, I, trying to see Sean off fuck up his car again. I like Han just being the mentor thing. And again, where's his dad? We don't know. Like Han basically got ducks him because he's like, hey, I'm, doesn't matter what hour of the night, what what day it is, you're gonna be here. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're in school. Mm-hmm. You're coming with me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like, what about his parents? <laughs> I will find you, and you will race with me, my son. Like, he fucked up his car, and and when he said, "Man, I'm gonna pay you back," and he was like, "You say that like you got a choice," and I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, right. <laughs> oh shit! Like, oh, shit. I'm like, hard. Do you forget this kid's in school? Like, are you gonna just take him completely away? <laughs> Screw his parents. Like, you don't know his parents. So like. Are you okay? Han doesn't give a shit. Like again, Han is cool, but man, he's pretty dirty, pretty dirty. But I kind of like it. Like I love that. I love that scene where his initiation, I guess, where he goes sent to the spa and like, hey, get. I want he he owes me some money. I love how he just, this guy just like, <laughs> fucks him up. But Han's just cool and like whatever, just give me the money. So I I like that whole stuff. <laughs> give him money, but yeah, I, I like everything. Like like Han's doing because I think Han explains his motives. It's like. He's not completely tied to this Jonkosa family, but he 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 actually needs DK because of the money. You know, like, oh, it's better to have the fifty percent of the city, you know, than nothing. So, I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. yeah. Although we find out he's he's not exactly following the rules exactly. No, 100%. no, he's yeah. not. <laughs> and, and I do like again his mentality. Again, he's just pretty cool. Because there's this one scene he talks to Sean, and he talks about like the you know, old people just walk around the city. He's like, you know, those people are just, they're scared. They're following the rules, man. Like I'm a, I'm a rebel. I don't follow the rules. Like I'm that not was afraid really cool, of anything. Though. I really like that stuff. And I love how it explains like, Oh, like, so what's your story, huh? And he's like, eh, well, you know, this Western, whatever, like this is my Mexico. I'm like, huh? I, so I was like, I don't know if the rest were seeing, if they're referencing, because I guess they didn't plan the future movies in, at this point, but I don't know if they're referencing the movie that he was actually in before for Justin Lin. I haven't seen the movie. I kind of want to watch it now. 
or it, it kind of just works now with what's going on with the future movies. I'm like, okay, it's kind of an accident, but it still worked probably. out. But it worked. It's like probably a little both. Yeah. Like, okay, I guess it worked out for some yeah. somehow. And it also makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Why it, so much money. It's like, how does he have so much money? And it's like, oh, right. yeah, right. So like, oh, so that's that's pretty pretty cool. I I really like that stuff, but. Again, like the whole training stuff, I really like that. I love seeing Sean just trying to get do drifting good. I'm like, damn, I'm fucking up. And all the old the two guys fishing, I'm like, oh, that's not drifting, man. Like, yo, that's not how you drift. I'm like, what? These old people know how to drift too. I'm like, okay, that's that's Apparently. awesome. <laughs> that's, that's super cool. And like, I again, like, I love seeing like, it's. I mean, this cool, this movie is just stylish, man. This this whole. I love seeing the neon colors, seeing the underground stuff, the sea, the the hidden clubs. I, I don't know. This it's so cool. I love seeing all of this the, the side of Tokyo. It was a great setting. I don't know if you guys agree, but Tokyo was a great setting for this franchise. I'm like, this is awesome. I I don't know if you guys do you guys agree. Like, is Tokyo a cool setting? <laughs> Totally. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bummed out that they haven't gotten well now. They did go back into the seventh movie later, but that's true. It's a little, a little bit of a letdown they didn't go back to here because, you know, there's a lot, lot to admire, like, you know, just the locations, the cars, you know, just everything, even the environments. Like every time yeah. they would go in like a casino or, you know, they would like go into the school and, you know, you see the classroom, everybody typing, you know, everything somehow looked really cool and style. Right. Like really. everything's cool. Yeah. Even you, you said the school even looked pretty cool. That, I don't know, it looks kind of isolating. I'm like, oh shit, I, I feel like shit. I don't know, maybe this po- the whole point, like Sean's like, oh. this new kid. Like <laughs> Sean's this scene. new kid. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, like I like the, I don't know, like the, the whole the whole school actually looked, looked pretty cool. And I don't know, everything, everything was awesome. Like, I don't know, everything was, was, was pretty cool. And like, like you said, like halfway through the movie, like Sean just leaves the home. It's like, fuck you, dad. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Like, <laughs> I'm done. And the dad doesn't do anything about it. Dad's like, all right, I guess he's 17. <laughs> okay. He's kind of an adult. All right. He's a he's a grown man. Like, okay. So whatever. We don't see that till way later in the movie. So that's cool. But I don't I, I like again, this movie becomes a criminal Yakuza movie. So I'm like, all right, I'm all in. This is awesome. And as we find out, Han is not completely, you know, a cool. You know, playing by the rules, like you said, kind of guy. He's doing some shady shit by the side, stealing some money. I love how I love how you know, like UK confronts him. He's like, dude, that's part of the game, right? Like we rip, we rip off each other. Like what? Would that even do something wrong there? Like I love he didn't he didn't care. He didn't even try to lie. He's like, dude, yeah, yeah, that's what we do, right? We rip off each other. Like that's what we do. So I'm like, oh man, you're awesome. So again, we we proceed to like like this. This awesome chase sequence. I really like this whole chase sequence between, like, you know, DK, this henchman, uh, you know, Neela and Sean and Han. And of course, we have the infamous scene, which I didn't know, like, people were still caught up with Han's death. Like, even before seven, you know, we were actually caught up with Tokyo Drift. Like, people, I remember people in, in high school, we were like, man, Han's death, dude, like, that still, still gets me. I'm like, really? Like, people were. Uh- People are really into his death. People liked him a lot. Yeah, I guess really. Dude, people... I, I, Go ahead. I gotta admit, I was a little. When I rewatched it, I was like, "Holy shit, that's dead. That's dead serious, dude. That's a little sad, actually, the way they filmed it." I was like, Holy "Yeah, shit, it, it, dude." And it's it's so fucking. Yeah, he gets Especially, like blown up. <laughs> yeah, he gets blown up, and it's pretty. And, and it's interesting because, again, these are high schoolers for the most part. So, like, getting through some brutal shit like this guy. From, explode in front of Sean I'm like holy shit man like that is mm-hmm. that is crazy but oh I love that scene about that shot where like they go through the bystanders and they go through this kind of melodic almost like oh Maria music yeah. it's like oh. yeah they drift they drift through the yeah. intersection <laughs> I was yeah. like that's cool yeah, that's pretty cool it's a stylistic but man it's awesome is it realistic? Fuck no. <laughs> no, 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 not realistic. It was like it's stylistic. You know? like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. Fuck it. Like that. That's awesome. So, like to believe. I mean, obviously later on we we find out how, but to believe that this Han just died from a random ass bystander just running through like boom, and we never find out what happened with that dude. I mean, obviously we know later on what happens, but as of this movie, we don't know like what happened to this bystander that crashed him. And we're like, what happened? Like Han just died. Oh. And nothing we don't know anything about Han's family, or anything about him. It's just like he's just here. It's a mystery. Cool. That's that's the cool thing about him. he's a mystery. You don't know what, what he's all about. But man, like that, that explosion is 
man, that, that was real. I was like, oh my God, he just blew him up. Yeah. But, but I noticed that. I noticed in this, even back in 2006, I'm like, wait a minute. We don't see Han in the car when they blow us up. I'm like, huh. Hmm. I mean, I don't think they planned this, obviously. Well, it's like, at least they can kind of use this scene again in the future and say, like, hey, hey, he was not in the car. We don't see him in the car. Yeah, they kind of, they only show him, like, hanging upside down, like, a little bit. And you're just like, oh, he's really hurt. Yeah. You know, right. like, you have, like, a little bit of time in between, and then it blows right. up. So it's like. <laughs> right. He pulled the taken and got out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, we, like, we don't, <laughs> uh, we don't see, at least in that scene, I think it's seven, they do show him blow up. I don't know. I don't remember. But at least at this uh, point, no, I think it's Jason. He's just Jason like, or something. You're right. But I, dude, I was waiting. I was. I know it's. I know it's not connected yet. But I was like, dude, where, I don't see Jason Statham. Where I don't see anyone standing in front next to the car. Like, where is he? He's, there's. He's supposed to be walking. Like in, in seven, he walks past the car, like right next to him. Like, oh, my name's Dominic Toretto. I'll kill your family. Boom. Like we don't see that yet. But I like. I was like, interesting. Like we, we don't see Han. In the car, I was thinking, oh, maybe because it's a P thirteen movie, they don't want to show a body like inside the, a burnt body inside, you know. But I was like, huh? Mm-hmm. If they want to retcon it a little bit, they can they can start using this scene again. They can kind of you can go away with it. But but yeah, man, like Hans, even the aftermath a little bit from Hans' death, it was you know it, it kind of affected a little bit of the story because you know how uh, Twinkie gets from the money. He's like, hey, Han would like you to have this money. I'm like, oh man, that's that's interesting. So I really. Once we do see Han get back, I really want to see Chon's reaction. Because, you know, we do see that deep connection they have with each other. Because Han was, like, more like the mentor kind of guy, right? He's like, he wasn't, like, the friend, but he was more like a mentor slash kind of a friend. So I would love to see Chon's reaction. Like, oh, it's Han. Like, what the fuck? I thought you died, man. Like, you were, like, you meant to me. <laughs> you meant a lot to me, man. Like, where have you been this whole time? I don't know. I, I would love to like see <laughs> Right. I don't know what the new movie is going to be like. I don't Dude, know. I don't know how they're exp- I don't know how they're going to explain it coming back. But I <laughs> hey guys, this guy that died twice is back. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I oh, man, I can't wait to see that movie. But after that, of course, we see like oh, again, like I told you, like dad, he, he doesn't care. He's like, all right, because he comes back to the house. His dad saves him, which I like that scene where his dad's like, "Don't you fucking touch him." Like, Oh fuck yeah, Dad! Beat him yeah, up, like, like don't fuck like, with him. I was like, holy <laughs> yeah. shit! Yeah, like don't fuck with him, man. Like, don't even try. But I love don't fuck with freedom, <laughs> right? Don't fuck with freedom. <laughs> but about at the end of the scene, it's like, okay, all right, yeah, you have goals. I'll let you go. I don't care if I'm your dad and I'm supposed to take care of your. I'm taking care of your well being. Like well, fuck it, do it. At least you're not making my mistake. That's it. That's like excuse. Like at least you're not making my mistakes. So like. Damn, what did you do to make it worse than what he's doing right now? Because he's doing some illegal criminal shit. <laughs> I'm like, I guess. <laughs> so uh, I thought I love uh, even at the end of the movie, his dad shows up again, oh, to like help fix the car for the race. He doesn't say anything. He's like, all right, I'm helping you out to race the, this super dangerous race that could risk your life entirely. Because if you lose, you're getting out of the city, and we don't know where you're gonna go. Because you have nowhere else to go. <laughs> so his dad, like, well, dude, I don't know. His dad's completely responsible for me. Like, wow, you're not trying anymore. Take care of your son. But whatever. <laughs> but I do, I'll be like later on, like the, the scene, the, the the final racing scene. Like, I will say, man, as of right now in this franchise, this has to be the best racing scene of the whole franchise for now. Because everything was super well done like the everything how it was filmed because man like justin justin let just knows how to make a dynamic going through like the landscape a little bit like oh we're gonna zoom away from this part of landscape and now we're gonna focus back on here where we're meeting the racers again and I'm like oh that's pretty badass and seeing different angles from him or, or seeing through dk i'm like damn man this is so awesome and it's also dynamic because again they're doing like going through curves they're not going just a straight lane the whole time so Man, I really love so like what do you guys think of this final racing scene? Like what's it compared to the other racing stuff like from the franchise? How does this compare? Like what do you guys think? It's pretty fun. I mean, we also do get that ridiculous phone thing again. So but that was pretty fun too. I did no. like that, even though I'm questioning the whole time, like, how do you guys have the Skype technology in 2006? <laughs> I mean, it's cool, but how does it work? But right, with that I said, know. I, I <clears throat> 
I'll admit it was a lot of fun to see them like, you know, going on the edges and trying not to fall off and oh no, what's going to happen next? That, it is, that it was, is a lot of fun. I'll admit it was a lot of, a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, it, it was, it was great, man. Like, what do you think, Harry? Really seen that you, you really like it? Um, yeah, it reminded me, like I was saying about that drifting anime, um, Initial D, because it a lot of it is in the mountains where like it's two on two drifting down a mountain, drifting up and down the mountain. And and the cell phone was funny because they don't, of course, it's, the, it's takes place in, in like um, like a later like 80s or something like that. So mm-hmm. they don't have cameras, but you know, there's people at each corner and they're like, they're like radios and they're like talking to each other, like, hey, so and so passed so and so at this turn. So it reminded me of that a little bit, you know, but like a new age type of thing with okay, okay. So the anime they do explain video, low quality cell phone. Oh yeah, low quality. Yeah, they, they, they they have they have people at the corner and and they and they're like everyone has like radios on the frequency and they're like hey so and so just passed so and so on this turn because they can't see the whole mountain you can see like yeah. pieces of it. Okay. Um, okay. So I thought that was pretty cool and. I do agree that the action improves like from the first one to the second one to the third one. Oh, um, I think some of that might be just budget too. Oh yeah. Budget. It's, oh yeah. So I think like, it's like, Justin Lin is, 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 is a good director. I think, oh, he's, action, he's so. really good. And, and I, I, I don't know how <laughs> back in the eighties, how, how's that fun to <laughs> hear a race? <laughs> like, Oh, they're going through where now? Okay, awesome. Like, I, I don't right, know. There. <laughs> That's a sound funny. Because, uh, the, they, they would like post up at certain corners that they knew that it was like, this corner is dangerous, so I'm going to post at this one because I know that I'm going to see some really cool shit at this particular part. Oh. Or some people will be at the finish line. Oh, okay. So it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, just how like rally racing is like, like you can't see the whole race, but I'm, I'm going I'm to go at the most, most exciting part like I know that people crash a lot at this corner, so I'm gonna stay at this corner because I might see a crash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That sounds pretty cool, but I guess in in this modern age, 2006, I think I think it's the coolest way to the coolest way to watch the whole race in life in person. Like, okay, I watched it through my shitty Boost mobile phone. <laughs> like, what is going on through here? <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> like, can't even tra- can't even tell what's going on. It's so pixelated. Because like, dude, some t- dude that especially that final race that dude that final racing scene there's no lights there's barely any lights in that mountainside so i don't know how the fuck they're just you can see the whole race <laughs> in that shitty phone because they don't have their their their, their yeah, true yeah they don't, they don't have the flashlights on either so like they can't even look at the fan race I'm like well, oh that's a car i guess like what, what's going on right now so i don't know like people i, I love the, re- the reaction shots of people like oh yeah go sean yeah so like okay i don't know i love that i love the whole thing that, that was that was pretty fun so and by the way, we don't ever explain. So you you guys know how DK rolled over the side of the mountain, flipped over, almost crashed Sean over, and we don't see what happened to him after the whole after that. That's the last thing we see him in the whole franchise. Nope. <laughs> Didn't even say if he's, he's dead. Gone. His yeah, uncle shows good. up. All right. His uncle shows up like, all right, you guys are free to go. <laughs> but oh, where's my where's my nephew though? Like nothing. Like <laughs> nothing. No. I don't like, love my son anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care about him though. He sucked because he he so he promised me he was gonna win, but no, he's a fucking loser. I don't give a shit about him. He's not a yakuza. I'm like, damn, this kid died. <laughs> like, or or we don't know who what happened to him. So okay, we'll move on to the next scene. Like, okay, I don't know. That sounds pretty funny. But of course, we get to the final big scene. The one's like, whoa. When we see, like, oh, now the new DK's in town is fucking Sean Boswell, dude. The kid from, I don't know where he's from, but he's somewhere in the South. So he shows up. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, like, that That was like, hey, DK, I mean, what's that? whatever. Of course, he's with Neela, and he was there. She's cool. And then, like, oh, who's this new guy? And once we hear that Don Omar show up, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Uh-uh. Only one guy no. plays Don Omar. Only one guy plays Don Omar <laughs> in Japan. And it's fucking Dominic Toretto, motherfuckers. He just not like, hey, I used to know Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I got number time. <laughs> I got number I'm time. changing the soundtrack. <laughs> right, like, I'll change up a little bit. I was like, okay. I'll I didn't have the budget for Pharrell. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's funny to know, like, 
like he says like i have all the time in the world but like if we go back to six oh no wait is it seven uh, you don't have time yeah. man we it's gotta a- we gotta move on like <laughs> You have you have Jesus Statham on your ass, man. You, you don't have time. You can eat those breaks as quick. But I don't know. I, I I love him showing up for whatever reason. Like, okay, that's pretty cool. That's like I can't imagine people watching the movie for the first time being like, oh wait, Donald Toretto's in this movie? What the fuck? Like this <gasps> these movies are connected? Like, what? Who would have thought these movies were connected? I, I mean, probably people would imagine, yeah. like, oh, this is a new chapter, there's a different story. We're never gonna see those characters again. We'll just move on. I'm like, oh wait, Dominic Toretto's what the fuck? Like that cool. that would have probably blow my mind. Like that's cool. And like I'll explain like, oh yeah, it was mind blowing. That that's cool, right? That was it mind blowing we saw in the theater. Yeah, it was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I, like how how does how did you totally get here? Toretto. Like what I the took fuck? A plane. <laughs> That was cool, and I, and I love the whole set of like, oh man, he's been apparently he's been uh, racing the whole throughout whole Asia, man. He's he's been kicking ass through Asia. I'm like, oh shit, dude, who's this guy? Who are we gonna talk to? Like, it's Dominic Toretto. Holy fuck! And all the history about oh this car, like oh cool car, like this is Haas car, man. Like, wait, Haas used to ride ride with you? Like, yeah, he used to ride with me, man. And like, oh by the way, it's the first movie, <laughs> the first movie where Dominic finally says, well, he doesn't say it verbally. This is the first time he says the word family because you know that's when twinkie says like hey dude apparently han was family family I'm like oh shit. oh yeah yeah because <laughs> Twinkie says it yeah mm-hmm. he's family so like dude like again it's like they didn't have this planned out but it's all fitting so well so how did they do this by accident i don't know how but they made it work i'm like oh shit like even said the word family like han's connected with him like, that's pretty badass i really like that stuff but apparently they explain like the reason why Vin Diesel's in the movie is because they do some some, uh, some testing footage for people to go watch the movie and apparently they didn't have a scene with him so it, it tested poorly people didn't like the movie so they thought all right let's go bring Vin Diesel in here and the only reason Vin Diesel came back was because he wanted Universal to give him the rights for Riddick so it was like all right I'll go back if only you can read mm-hmm. so I'm like all right so it's, it's funny how nowadays of course the whole cast loves the franchise they're like man this franchise it's iconic, man. This movie, is, it's, it's been a part of my DNA. But in the beginning, nobody gave a shit because apparently no one wanted to come back for the third movie. They're like, I don't want to come back with this. And, and, and Vin Diesel, after the first movie, was like, I'm done. I'll, I'll do Triple X and I'll do uh, Riddick. So it's like, I love how nowadays, like, oh, man, this franchise. Even Vin Diesel, the big champion of the whole franchise, like, man, this move, this franchise. I am car. Part of me. <laughs> <laughs> I am car. This one movie's me. It calls me like, so, okay. <laughs> I am fast. Dump I am car. Money. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right. Once they give him the dump trucks of money, and I guess, I guess I think by f- the fourth movie, that they, I guess he becomes a secondary producer, so he has some control of freedom, some creative freedom. So I think that's where he feels like, all right, this is my franchise now. But as of this movie, he's still like, nah, dude, I only come back because I want Riddick's my baby. Riddick's my Riddick will be the big franchise, people. That'll be my big franchise. Little D, oh, yeah. <laughs> little D. Yeah, because Vin Diesel is a D and D nerd, so that's pretty much his D and D fantasy, <laughs> right? It's like that, that, that's cool. They have that stuff, but like he knew, and like man, I have to come back for the fourth movie. I got, I have to do this. But I don't know. That, that whole ending is cool. I mean, the ending's not the strongest part because we don't really know what happens to Sean. It's like, all right, so Sean's DK. And he's racing Vin Diesel. And, and he that gets is the girl. It. I'll be back and in like five minutes. Girl. <laughs> and that is it, right? Even, <laughs> and even I, though watching, watching uh, the end of this movie, like, it made me think, like, damn. No, I can't unsee it now because he gets, like, the girl in the end. You know, right. we were talking about the misogyny stuff in the beginning. Is that this yeah. movie reminds me so much of... James Cameron's Avatar and Pocahontas and all that stuff. <laughs> oh, we have I didn't think about that actually. <laughs> to a foreign nation, and he all of a sudden becomes good at this tradition that everyone is supposed to be amazing at, and he beats the best person, and he's like true. a new king. It's just like you've been drifting for like a few months, and you're like the best drifter <laughs> in Japan now. You're here to DK now. So okay, so this is like Avatar. Okay, you fall in love with the native girl. And then all of a sudden, you're just like the best person. And I was like, wow. This is, this is a, That's something this I was a... thinking about. <laughs> I was thinking of those little parts. I'm like, okay, is this a typical movie where this white saver just came to this foreign country and 
beat everyone's ass. Like, I'm the motherfucker yeah. here. I'm the big motherfucker in this town. Like, who the fuck are you, John Wayne, bitch? Like, what the hell? Came out of here and just beat over his ass. I'm like, God damn. So I, I thought about that, too. But it's just the way he said it. Like, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. But, like, yeah. Because I didn't see it until, like, the end. And then I was like, damn. This is exactly what this movie is. It's like Dances with Wolves. It's like all those types of movies. Like he literally took over the town. Like he's DK's done. Like he's DK now. Like oh shit. Okay, he's a drifting king. People have been drifting for decades, (laughs) and all of a sudden you're better than them in like less than a year. Yeah, right. Like how? I mean, we don't know the whole sequence of time that he learned how to perfect drifting, but apparently he's so gifted as a driver. He just perfected it. Let's just say it was like two weeks or something or a month. I don't know. We perfected it so quickly. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. But it was a montage. <laughs> it was a montage. I'm like, get the It was a karate out. kid montage. <laughs> it's so dumb. I'm like, whatever. Like, ow, ow, whatever. I'm all in this shit. Like, okay, this kid from high school, 17 year old from, I don't know, Wisconsin show up. I'm like, I'll beat your ass. It's like, okay, cool. But <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever. It did like, feel like that a little. That's what it was. I'm, I'm, I'm a I, Midwestern boy. I'm a Western boy. Here takes a man in Japan. All right, okay, <laughs> so whatever. But I, I, I want to know. Like, maybe the nice movie touches on this, but I want to know. Like, where is mom? Is this mom the picture anymore? Is he calling? Like, hey, that's not. Hey, <laughs> like, hey, um, whatever his husband, ex husband's name was. Like, how's our son? Is he doing okay? Yeah, he's running Japan now. He's running Tokyo on the underground scene, and I don't he's know racist. where he is right now. <laughs> he's a Yakuza man. He's a Yakuza. I'm sorry, honey. I tried my best. Like, all right, bye. So, I don't know. <laughs> that, I, tried my best. Was, I tried my best. I'm in the I'm in the army, man. I, I'm busy. So like, okay. So, I don't know. That's just pretty funny. I, I love. Also, I love how Sean took over his his only project that he had was his dad trying to build that car. And, Sean's like, get that shit, yoink, that shit's mine now, that's my car, so like, so dad's like, all right, I guess I'll have sex with random ladies in Japan, that's all I gotta do now, and go to work, and that's all I do, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I do, <laughs> that's my whole purpose in well, Japan I mean, now. he's a military man in Japan, I mean, that's kind of what they did, they went to work, and they, they, and they, they the women, <laughs> I mean, they that's addressed it in the movies, like, well, I guess we right. just flip to the random women now. <laughs> I was like, that's it. Like, go on, son. Like, oh, forget your high school degree or, or even a bachelor's. You're you're the DK now. That's that's where it's at. <laughs> that's just, it's so funny, man. This Racing kid, is like, cool, son. <laughs> it's just awesome. Like, his progression, like, whatever, man. That's what's going on with him. But I, I want to talk about Sean a little bit because I, I will say, as of right now, at least just forgetting the future movies, he is my favorite protagonist. I actually, I, I mean, well, I have to say Lucas Black, I think, is a better actor than Vin Diesel and Paul Walker. I mean, rest in peace, Paul Walker, but I do think he's a better, much better actor than even the entire cast of The Fast and the Furious. I think so, in my opinion. I think he's really cool. He has a personality. Because, again, he comes off like he's a super straight, pissed-off guy. Even for the posters, you might think, like, like I said, like, he just didn't appeal to me. Like, I don't think I, I don't know if I'm going to like this guy. But once you see from the beginning, like, he smiles. He's just very cocky. He's very cocky. I mean, he's like, oh, he's your girlfriend? Not anymore. He, she's coming with me. Like, <laughs> he, he, he's so cocky. Like, oh, you're, you're the girlfriend of the biggest Yakuza member of Tokyo? Pff, I don't give a shit. Like, I'll, walk, I'll even walk to the bar and talk to the uncle. Your daddy, man. I'll walk to him. And even talk to him face to face. I don't give a shit, dude. Like, I'm gonna do this. I, I don't know. I really, really like them. I, I thought he had some some kind of interesting personality. He was very enjoyable to watch. I don't know. Are you guys? Am I crazy here? Like, what do you guys think of Sean, our protagonist? Well, I want I want to step in there. He he does have like some niceness to him because even when he's talking to that Yakuza guy, he's like, "Well, sir, can you please let me finish my business with him?" You know, he's he's a little formal about it too. He's got the Midwestern thing going on too. He's not. He is a little cocky. But he's all like, "Hey man, what's wrong? Just here, here's my here's my iPod. Stop fighting, man. Come on, calm down." <laughs> that's true. That's true. Because like, cause I like will, I'll Henry... say this. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll say this about Lucas Black. He he committed to the accent a hundred percent. He committed to it. Didn't stop. Stuck with it the whole movie. And I give him a lot of credit for that. Because I've seen so many movies where people do this accent and they go, "All right." Ah, well, Oops, broke my accent. Sorry. That is true. Although I think <laughs> isn't that part of his 
Isn't that isn't that his actual accent? Because I've seen him in. Because I was like, oh, where's he been? And I he's been in this CBS show, this high procedural show, and I think that's his accent. I don't know. Is he still? He, he still plays in NCIS Southern. New Orleans, I think. Right. I think he's he's in that show. And I think he still has that accent going on. Yeah. So I that's think, just his thing, though. Yeah, that's his thing, I guess. Either that's his act, that's the actual person, or that's his stick. I'm like, all right, we kind of like your accent, so let's keep it going for your whole career, I guess. But because I think he was, uh, he was in this, he was in this war movie. I forgot. Was he in Pearl Harbor? I don't think so. I don't think he was. He was. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Jarhead. Boy. Jarhead, right? He was in Jarhead, dude. He's actually. I was pretty good in that movie, so I think he has the Jarhead. same accent with that movie. So like. But like no, like how you said, and kind of the Henry's point, like <laughs> he does still play as this white saber guy because, like you said, he goes to the high school, the hell Twinkie, like, hey man, just take my iPod, take it with me, right? Don't don't break it, <laughs> don't break <laughs> it, <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> right? Don't don't beat up my black friend, please. Don't beat him up. <laughs> he's the only thing I have, please. But like he's just like he's always trying to save up everything. He's trying to oh, oh I'm trying to. Save up Neela. He's the nicest guy around. He's oh, he's charming up Neela. Like, oh, Neela, like, talking about your story. Although he offends her, but at one point, he's like, are oh, you this kind of girl who's just trying to be rebelling against your parents, right? Like, oh, he just, like, you're not, I think he you're apologizes not for it, though. No, he does apologize, though, later on. So that's like, oh, that's, that's like, that's cool. I, I, I get it. He just looks like a cool, sweet guy. He's very problematic. He's very, very hot headed. He's very, very troubling. But I think he is a pretty cool protagonist like i really like them like uh, would, or you disagree with us henry like what do you th- what do you think about sean <laughs> um i think he's okay i mean i <laughs> think he has a personality of a brick um, oh <laughs> oh no <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that what do you think he has a personality of a brick why oh uh, i don't know I, I mean i mean he's okay it's just maybe because just, just like with Paul Walker, like when you like put him next to like someone like you know Paul Walker, you, you know you had like uh, Ben Diesel and then you had like Tyrese, like you, the side characters are always like the best characters in these movies. Like because you got this one is Han versus like he's just like really cool, like and just I don't know for Lucas Black, he, he was just he was okay. Like I wouldn't say I, like I hate him, but it was just he felt a little like generic Midwest. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, he um, kind of he kind of was around that yeah but yeah Q on yeah but I mean he 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 did like I feel like he did like enough to like make me like not be like oh why I hate him it's just I feel like he didn't like add too much for me in terms of like positives it was just like okay you're kind of middle of the road but I mean that's how like Paul Walker was in the beginning in the, in the first few movies he's kind of middle of the road versus like you know until later, you know, when Paul Walker was like, okay, I, I can I can feel the personality, I can see why people like him, but you know, it was kind of the same feeling I got from the first two movies. Okay. Um, okay. Cause yeah, I guess for me, yeah, so far, like, forgetting the future movies, like comparing to Brian O'Connor, who's supposed to be our protagonist. Like, although in, in second movie, Brian is pretty psychotic, he's pretty crazy in the second movie. He's I'm like, a cop, oh, man. We're cl- yeah, like I'm a cop, man. All this clothes like, on, man. Yeah, right. Racing backwards, like <laughs> fuck, you're wrong. Like, okay, he's I'm in crazy. love with Eva Mendes. Right. <laughs> like Eva Mendes loves me for no whatever reason. She just loves me. Like, okay, so he's kind of reckless in the movie, but he's still he's not completely great or fleshed out. At least in this movie. I guess for that high school angle was easily relatable because like, you know, we've all been through the same thing in high school. Like, you know, it's something, it's an easy setting to be related. I mean, obviously it goes ridiculous with the whole criminal stuff and then Yaku and all that shit. It goes way too crazy. But I, I, I don't know, I did like, I did like his personality. He's like this cocky asshole. I don't know, but, he, but he still has like a heart of gold, I guess. And it, I think he's more charming than Brian O'Connor is as of now. So I really like them. I really like Twinkie. Like, I get, like you guys said, Twinkie's kind of underused, I guess, or underdeveloped. But he's he's just interesting because, like, what is he all about? Like, what is he doing? What is his job? Like, he's just we don't see his parents or his relatives or whatever. He's just there in Japan. <laughs> Although he does say, like, he, I think he's like an army brat. He, I think he said, like, oh, I'm an army brat, just like you. But we yeah. don't see his parents anywhere <laughs> trying to take control of his no, life. Or- I mean, that's... <laughs> Go ahead. That's a trope. 
I mean, you know, the the best friend, um, usually the best friend is, you know, black or, or like Latinx or, or, you know, or Asian. They talk about their parents, but you never see them. They don't really have a love interest. They're just there to help the protagonist. <laughs> That's true. Make their goal, pretty much. <laughs> That's true. Be supportive. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> right, kind of like a lot of movies. I mean, like, oh, the I best mean, friends are there. He does. Go ahead. Yeah, but he does remind me of like people I went to high school with, especially with like going around selling stuff, <laughs> like you know, selling candy bars and selling just stuff out of the book bag. You're like, how did you get that? But it's That's like, true. you know, no, don't, don't, don't tell me. Like, let me. I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy one of those. Don't tell me where you got it from. I'll, I'll buy something. <laughs> Right, like I, yeah, I think we, I I see kids like that in like, like high school, like these young entrepreneurs, like they can just know how to sell you stuff. They just know how to present themselves. So like that's what I liked about his, his character because he's just I don't know he's always active. He just knows how to talk to people. Like people just love him. Like women love him. Youngs all love him. Han loves him. He just treats him like his little brother or something. Like people just love Twinkie for whatever reason. Like he's just mm-hmm. he's like one of the best people in school. Like. I don't know. He's I don't know. He's very I don't know. He's very likable. I think Bow Wow or Little Bow Wow at this point. He was I think it was pretty good. I think he was very very good. Like, what do you think about Twinkie, Andy? Um, I mean, you know, for the most part, Bow Wow did the best he could. Obviously, he doesn't get a lot of fleshing out here, but you know, for what it's worth, I mean, I think he did a really good job. Uh, you know. I did like the aspect of him, you know, just selling stuff and getting money out of it. But I did keep asking, like, where the hell are you getting this shit from? <laughs> right. Oh, well, I'm not going to question it, I guess. Writing right. Right. <laughs> like, even because yeah, movie, no, Bow Wow did a pretty good job. Yeah. Like, even because of the movie, he's like, oh, I have these Jordans that are not even the market yet. Like, I'm the first one that has these shoes. Like, where the hell do like, you get what? those shoes? Like, I was like, nah, these shoes yeah. are bootleg, right? That, that's not real. But they never get into that. So I'm like, did you just get real Jordans and Never Apparently out. not, because nobody complained about him. Right? Nobody complained about him. They'll like, never know. I'm like, it's like okay. Well, yeah, because they had a scene of, of him on the strip, like going to sell the shit. And he's like, yeah, yeah, here you go. Come on, yeah, take dude, it. Dude, <laughs> take it, take it. Selling, selling. I'm like, oh, wow, how is he doing? Where is he getting these stuff? Like, how does he know these people? Because he even knows the people from like opens a parking lot for him. Like, he just knows. He just knows people. And he has cars. And I'm like, yeah. okay, then whatever. I don't know where he came from, but that little mystery is cool. But I don't know if he does come. I think he comes back in this movie, right? Fast Nine, I think. Yeah, he's coming back. Uh, they used the archive footage, I think, in Seven to, uh, in Lucas Black as well. It uh, wasn't uh, actual footage, I think. Because I would have loved to see, like, dude, how they explain Bow Wow coming back as a 17 year old in this next movie in Fast Nine. Because, yeah, man, exactly. I'm 17, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm 17. I'm way taller than I used to be back in 2006. I'm like, there's no way how they're going to explain that. I would have loved if they gave him a wig. Just back those dreads again. Just plaster him in his head. So oh I would have loved God. that shit. No. I would have loved that shit. No. I'm like, hey, man, I'm 17. I'm still in high school. What's up? I would have loved Every to time so they do those cornrow wigs, it looks so bad. It looks, always looks bad. I would love to Every see time. that, man. I, I please, please bring back well. Just for like a little scene, no archive footage. Please bring it back. I want to see this. Come on. At this point, just do it. You brought you brought Lucas Black for the seventh movie. Trying to explain to him as this is the scene straight after this. Tokyo Drift and looks nothing like him. Please bring bring Bow Wow back for this next movie. I really want to see that. But oh my god! And of course, uh, Neela. I mean, I, I liked as of the love interest. I guess, is she better than Eva Mendes? I think so, but it's not its not anything revolutionary. Mm. It's, they're still, yeah. they still don't have those female characters there yet. I, I did like that, that, that little crew that they had, those, those, those two Wonder Twins, I saw them, like they, they're tech whiz, like they, they know how to build cars, you know, the, the two, those two people, like the, the girl and the guy that were with them sometimes. Like, Even though they barely like, got dialogue. Yeah, they barely have any dialogue. But, <laughs> but I'm like... We don't get to know them at all. We don't know anything about them. I was like, if I can, I'm like, oh, they're, they're kind of like, are they related somehow? Because they kind of they kind of re- kind of had this relationship, but kind of looked like a brother and sister to me. I was like, I don't know. I was, I'm just building this head cannon. You know, this doesn't exist, but okay, that's whatever it was. But Neela, Neela's cool. I liked her backstory. But again, 
not much from her developed there except for that backstory. She's just a love interest. I'm like, that's all. That's all she is. Did the best she could. Did the best yeah, she, did she, she could. Yeah, she did the best she I thought she was really good. I thought the actor was pretty good. I, I think she did a really good job with what she had. But yeah, still, we don't, we still don't have those fleshed out female characters yet. No. So, so we just Not got that. While. Not for a while. <laughs> Not for a while. Not, Not for, for a while. while. <laughs> And of course, Han, you know, we talk about Han, he's cool. Oh, what's the actor's name? Oh, I forgot. Um, I'll, I'll remember for him next time. Gosh, I can't remember. Yeah, for either. Han, I forgot. I Shit. Well, I'll remember, I know I'll his remember name, the next not movie. The actor. I'll remember him in the next movie, but man, he's just cool. You know, he's he's just super awesome, cool, laid back. Song King. Song King, yeah, Song King. He's just, he's cool. Even the voice, just hearing this, his voice, is like, man. I wish he would do some voice acting. I don't know if he's done some voice acting before, but he is just pretty, pretty badass. I really like them. And of course, DK, the middle of the movie. I mean, I'll do the Donkey rankings. Kong. Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Even, 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 before I, even before I remember what DK meant, I was like, I said, I mean, they thought it was Donkey Kong. Like, what does DK mean? Like, it's not Donkey Kong. What the fuck? Like, oh, Drift King. Okay, whatever. But I'll do the rankings now for the villains. I have to say, I'll put him on number one. I'll put uh, uh, Car- uh Carter Verone number two. Carter. And Johnny- yeah, Carter, Carter Verone. <laughs> and, and Johnny Tran is still in the bottom. Johnny Tran, man. Nothing there for John- Johnny. Johnny's all the way down Johnny. for me. <laughs> Johnny's all the way in the bottom, man. Like, are you guys are you guys have the same order for the villains? Because I think it's it has to be like that, right? For me, yeah. For me, it would be, be the same, for sure. It'll be the same. What, what yeah, about you, Harry? It would, it would be the same, because... It's it's the same because John John Tran they just they didn't give enough like for him to do at least with DK like there's like a relationship between him and Han and with his uncle and it kind of like it was all kind of like working together with the the main plot of the movie but and you know it, yeah because John Tran just doesn't have anything to do and then you know Carter he's you know Carter's okay but you yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, but also this like I think there's more characters in the second movie, so Carter doesn't have as much screen time. That 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 is true. Mm-hmm. That is true. It's just like remembering Carter. Carter's like almost this paper thin cookie cutter villain. Like oh, I'm, I'm evil. Uh, I'll put rants in your fucking stomach, and uh, like, I'm evil. I'm, I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm psychotic. <laughs> That's all he is. But at least a DK or Takashi, like he has. Some development, like you said, like their relationship with his uncle. He's trying to get his approval, kind of like what Han said in the in the first act of the movie. He's like, hey, like he's not really, like DK is not really Yaku, so he's playing gangster. He's just, he's not there yet. So there's something there for him. He's still not fully fleshed out because he's still at the end of the day like, I'm evil. I I just want the girl. And blah blah blah. You suck. Like who? For immediately, he just saw he just see Sean, he just immediately hates him for whatever reason. Like, who the hell is this tourist? Like, <laughs> but other than that, he has some character to him, but he, yeah, he's still not that very fleshed out. But I, I compared to the others, yeah, he's the best villain so far. He's the best villain in the franchise so far, but, uh, at least for the first three movies. But I, I really like them, I like everyone else in the movie. Justin Lin, let's talk about him real quick. I mean. Man, talk about knowing how to do action. Like again, everything just looks cool and crisp and clean. Every, like camera movements, even sometimes they there was one scene they went through the cars just for like a quick brief, like very quickly, but it wasn't anything that stood away like in the first two movies, or like they go all the way through the fucking engine, the socks pipe and all that shit. At least in this movie's like, nah, we'll just do it, <laughs> we'll do it very quickly. And we'll focus on the, on the actual stunts, which I guess like what you said, Henry, maybe they have more money and I don't know the budget for this movie. But I can tell it looks way better. Obviously, it's 2006, so it's kind of unfair to compare to a movie that came out in 2001. But this movie just looks way better. It's just, it's just, it just just knows how to direct stuff. And, not, and, and, no, and no disrespect to John Stimbleton. I think he's a very good director. He's really good. But oh, yeah. even some of, the, some of the racing is in that first, second movie. It's just all green screen behind him doing this hyper dry shit. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> and this movie... They used NOS one time and then look ridiculous. It actually looked pretty cool. Like, oh, doesn't look like they're going to space. They're actually driving. It looks very practical. So, like, what do you guys think of Justin Lin's directing here? Like, as a first, I think it's the second movie, if I'm not mistaken. Like, what do you guys think of him jumping into this franchise? Like, did you like his style, everything? 
So I, I really think that Justin really like a fr- instead of like the other movies where I feel like I'm watching actors in a green screen car in this movie, every time I see the a- actor in the car, definitely the way he directed it, I feel like they're actually legit driving in the car. And at least he, you know, if they weren't, he made it look like it, you know, with all the angles and all that stuff. So I got to give him credit for that. I got to give him credit for the just the action scenes in general. Those were a lot of fun. And oh, just man. the racing was so fun. Super. Well, I, I really did feel like I was playing me for speed while I was watching this. Thing. Right. It's, right. It's crazy this movie. Yeah. This movie gave me a lot of PS2 vibes. A lot. I, I was I felt like I was, I was playing. Like, oh, sure. Need for speed PS2 game. A little bit like, more upscale, but yeah. Yeah, a little bit of scale. Like this is pretty fun. I, I man, I really like that. What do you think of like Justin Flynn's directing, Henry, like or style? Um, I, I liked it, and it makes sense why they decided to have him um, come back for a lot of the future movies. But you know, because he, even though like this movie's not you know as you know received you know well received as some of the other ones. You can definitely say like the action is still good in here, and and for an action movie, that's like the most important thing that you need. You know, you know, other than really good characters, you got to have really good action. Um, and and the the races are very exciting, and a lot of them are very practical. Like the cars are actually doing the stunts, so you're just like, whoa, how did you know? How did they actually do that? You know, actually watching. So they definitely put the money towards like setting up the stunts, um, getting the stunt drivers. Um, to actually, you know, do them and planning it out. So um, I definitely, you know, give them a pause for that because that was like the parts I enjoyed the most about the movie is is yeah. uh, the racing, like the scene we were talking about with um, they were chasing chasing Han right before he dies, like them going bobbing, weaving through the streets, you know, drifting mm-hmm. around the intersection with the people. Like that was just a really cool um, action scene, really cool. Like you know, like the way it was like shot, it was very exciting. Oh, it, was, it was man. He just Justin Lin's directing was really bad. By the way, I forgot to mention, and that's chase scene with Han. Sean kills a motherfucker in this movie. Like he kills that goon by crashing his car next to him, and the incoming traffic kills him. I think I don't. I don't they didn't say he's dead, but I think from the expression from oh, he's dead. Do, even from DK, <laughs> he goes like shit, dude. Like he's. Yeah, yeah, not my man. Him. <laughs> not him, dude. Like not my friend. He's dead. Well, I was like, oh shit, like Sean. Kill this dude! I'm like, oh crap! Like, we're not gonna bring that up. Even like, though, <laughs> even though that that friend had a habit of of spitting at people, where it's like, oh, people yeah. who spit at people, especially in their face. Yeah, this, like, you know him dying like that. Yeah, like, I was like, fuck you, you. <laughs> right? It's like, yeah, you, you go fuck yourself with spitting in everybody's face and fighting people for no reason just because you're an asshole. Like, oh, my iPod's broken. Like. Was it really broken? Just kind of looking for a fight. Like, don't, don't, don't fuck with me, man. No, guys, I, I, I God damn. Everyone's gonna come back for returns. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. I love the balance. I'm like, no, everyone's gonna come for more for, for returns. I'm like, come on, like, nobody's gonna come for that. No like, refunds. No refunds. <laughs> everyone's gonna get refunds. I'm like, oh, okay. But no, like, again, Justice Lynn's right thing really good. It looked super, super well done. Every, everything. He made Tokyo look super awesome. I, I guess the process, like you know, the set designers and everything, but everything, like from like just the landscape shots, everything looked so fucking cool. Like, man, this this is like the best looking city so far in this franchise on the first three movies. Miami looked cool. LA has this personality, but this is the one that's like, man, I really love the whole culture, the car culture here. Super awesome. And this is the first movie I, I'll say has a pretty good script. <laughs> it's not the best script come on i'm not gonna say it's the best script ever but at least that's it just feels like a a film if i can say that it feels like a film doesn't feel like it's wacky motion picture it feels like a motion picture you know there's there's some good dialogue here here and there there's some good acting good direction the writer uh, chris morgan i think he did a pretty good job like this is the first movie it feels like man this there's some actual triple A and all around so far because you know so even the second movie I don't know, I enjoyed it but there's some stuff in there even the first even the first movie still has some stuff in it. but this was for me I'll say right now this as of these first three movies this is my favorite Fast and Furious movie I don't know if you guys agree with me but I think it's like 
number one for me right now. I think the first movie, second is number two. And I think Two Fast and Furious, although I enjoy Two Fast and Furious more than the first one, I do have to acknowledge that the first one is way better, or it's a better movie than the second movie. Like, what, what do you guys rank as of these first three movies so far? What, what do you got, what's your ranking of each uh, in the position? Mm. Token Drift has to be. So, good. this is where I'm kind of like, <laughs> where I'm just not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure because I still think one out of these three is my my favorite. And I think a lot of that is because of the nostalgia factor and it just kicked off the franchise and it it was a pretty good movie to start something and it was mostly standalone. And I've had this argument with a lot of people about which one's worse, two or three, because I think everyone considers those to be like, most people consider those to be like the bottom tier ones. And a lot of people kind of go back and forth if three is the worst or or two is the worst. So I was of the opinion that two was always the worst for me. Watching it again, it's like, at first I was like coming in, I was like, I think three is worse than two. But after talking about it, I think two is still worse. So I think it's one, three, and then two for me right now. Okay. Okay. That's pretty cool. What, what about you, Andy? What, what, what's your rank? It's <laughs> hard for me, man. Because <laughs> I had a lot of fun with the second one. And I mean... There, there, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of nostalgia for the first one. Oh man, but I really had a lot, 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 lot of fun with this one. So I definitely Tokyo Drift. I think is going to be the top one so far. Ah, I really love John Singleton. There's some things I love about the first one. It's so hard to pick that one for me. Okay. Uh, you know what? I would say as of right now. Two, three, two, one. That's where I would go. So okay, far. okay. I, 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 I would disagree with that. I'd be like, okay, I, I can see that. I, because like, again, two is the one I enjoyed the most out of the, uh, compared to the first one. But I do think the first one is just uh, makes a little bit more of a better movie. Just only problem with that movie, looking back back at it now, it's it's not a completely enjoyable movie sometimes it can be a little eh, not too yeah not there's a lot of parts. dialogue yeah it's not as completely like thrilling like oh my god like this is awesome like compared to these other two movies i just think number two has some story-wise it's just not there so, like, there's no barely a story here it's whatever it is and there's some some bad stuff in that movie oh, it, it can be good or bad either way but this one i have to say this, this is a better main movie all around like everything from story although the story is pretty simple but everything from the characters a little bit fleshed out everything visually i love this movie a lot but i, I also i'm interested to know him you said like you said this movie doesn't hold up to you like i want to know like what are reasons for that oh um i think it's because my whole point about the whole avatar dance of wolves things like that was one of those things where i kind of saw that now and i've never seen that before when i've watched a movie so after seeing that kind of just like kind of dampens a little bit my my um enjoyment of it but i mean i really like the action and and it's like i was saying like it reminds me of initial d which is a really cool driving anime so um it's still like enjoyable watch it's just it's, it was not as I didn't enjoy it as much as I remembered since I've watched it so much on TV. You know when you know I was I, don't know, I wasn't that much younger, but um, you know that was what I was over a decade ago. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it just yeah. I mean I mean I mean that's fine with movies that they don't hold up as well. But I still don't still still don't think it's like bad. It's just like. You know, when you say, oh, okay, this movie's awesome, and you watch it, it's like, oh. It, it's yeah. Okay, I, it's, it's, it's I, 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 I can see that. And yeah, for sure. That, yeah. <laughs> the element you brought up was, was funny. Like, <laughs> the white guy going to the foreign country. I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny. Like, that, that's true. I don't think that that kind of movie would not be made today. I don't think so. It's, it's just like, no. it's, not as, it's not as completely um, blatant in your face like Pocahontas or... Or even Avatar. Avatar was like the oh last. God. It's, Avatar was like the last. One. <laughs> yeah, especially now that if in the the, the very last um, driving scene, you know they have you know the American car, the old muscle American car, but they are using a Japanese engine. 
<laughs> That's true. So I'm even worse. <laughs> oh my it's god, like... yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that too. Oh my god, yeah. But it drives just as good. <laughs> oh my god. So there's some there's some patriotism and shit in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can I can see that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> For sure, I can see that. Uh, odd placements of that. <laughs> oh like yeah. the dad wearing a navy shirt. Hurt. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm <laughs> uh, wearing a navy shirt. I'm, I'm, I'm navy. Who don't forget? Who not forget? All right. Yeah. Don't forget. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, they bring some stuff in there. But man, for my final thoughts, I like I said, I think it's the best one so far. I do think that. Oh, I, I just want to quickly mention the soundtrack. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it's badass. Even like the Japanese music. Like it's just you know, I'm saying that because like I'm not. I'm not used to hearing a lot of Japanese music. I can I do, but not as frequently. But for a whole movie that put that music, I was like, man, the, the music choices they put here, right? it's awesome. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, I'm not saying like the whole genre like Japanese music like it's bad or anything, but like at least the songs that they chose for this movie are really good. I'm like, holy crap, this is one. There's only one one I didn't like, and it's Which not on the official soundtrack. Oh, uh, the okay, rock okay, song okay. they use. I didn't love that. Uh, I was like, oh. Uh, Oh, this the one from the, cool the racing scene. Be. The first, the first racing scene, like I was like, oh me. come on, man, things <laughs> can rock here. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> dude, everything else is great. For all that is- that stuff, <laughs> most stuff on there. I was like, no, like, like other songs. Obviously, the the big theme of the movie, like that song. I, don't know, I think it's called Drift Song or something. I don't know, Truck and Drift. I think it's called. I don't know, but that song, obviously, Teriyaki Boys. I believe. I think so. I don't, I'm not sure, but that song. Kicks ass. I had a hard time slaps. finding any of their music on streaming. Though. Yeah, it's Teriyaki Boys. Okay, so yeah, that song, man, it's fucking awesome. I love that song. And he was by the Neptune, so. Oh, shit. yeah, Pharrell was all over that the whole oh, thing. Crap. Okay, oh, that's that's pretty cool. So, even this oh, the one song, I forgot in what scene it was. I think it was one of the maybe the second recent scene, or maybe the some of somewhere around there, but there's some songs they use in there. Like, oh, shit, this is pretty. Pretty awesome, and of course, you know they took they put they took him a heart strain for Don't Go Mind to the end twice in the credit scene. I'm like fuck yeah, man, that's how you do it. Like you you end the movie with that, and you continue the end credits with that. So like fuck yeah, man. So I'm like, I cannot wait for the next movie. We're gonna put more of his, his music in there. Hell yeah, I cannot wait for that. So the soundtrack of this movie, the best one yeah. so far. His first three movies, awesome. There's no jaw roll in here, so it's progression. <laughs> jaw roll, baby. <laughs> He rocks in here, unfortunately. You leave John but... alone. <laughs> he had hits. K Rock is in here, so it's unfortunate. But hey, I, I, I even forgot I was him, so I enjoyed it for the one scene I saw. I was like, oh, yeah, this, this song is, yeah, it's very early 2000s, but yeah, okay, I'm, I'm into it. But yeah, again, this movie is awesome. I really loved it. I I will say, for my score, I think it's the highest one I'll give it so far. These first three movies. First three movies I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. It's just a purely great movie. I, only p- point is, it's, this movie's fun, but it's not a movie that I, I'll be like, oh, I want to watch this movie tomorrow again. Like, nah, it's, a, it's like a, I'm good. I like to watch it again, really. Uh, so that's the big unfortunate part about it. It's, it's not like oh, I want to watch Fast 6 again or I want to watch uh, Fast 5 again. It's like, this movie's, it's like, almost at the end of that first era where it's like, it's still not that's fun as the later movies. So, but the movie, I think it's story's still good. It's very enjoyable. There's a lot of enjoyable stuff in here. It's a very good movie. It's just like, it's not a movie that, I, oh my God, I want to go watch it. I want to watch it again now. Like, I don't know. Maybe talking about it now is making me excited about it again, but I don't know. It's not a movie that I want to watch on my, on my list or my marathon again. So that's only a big unfortunate part, but eight out of 10. I think it's a great movie. What about you, Henry? What do you think? What is your score? Final thoughts on Tokyo Drift? Uh, I don't remember what I rated the other ones. I think there were what sevens, seven and a half. So I oh, think too fast to give it like a six. Same... I think you gave too fast a, a six. I think that's like the lowest one. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I gave the first one a seven and a half. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I would probably split the difference and make it like a seven. Um, Mainly because I still enjoy the first one more in terms of like a movie, but this one had like the action was way better. 
Um, like you said, it was way more dynamic. It was better shot. Um, I, that might be because they had, you know, bigger budget. But also, you know, Justin Lynch is, is a really good action director. Um, and it kind of could continue the tradition of having decent side characters um, that, you know, keep things a little bit interesting, you know, you know, having some a little bit of chemistry with the main character, even if like the main character isn't the strongest in my, in my opinion, but, um, <laughs> you know, you know, other, you know, if you have enough other characters you can kind of help uplift, you know, a, a movie. So um, in terms of, you know, if I was like marathoning, you know, Fast and Furious, I, I think just like with the second one, I would just probably just uh, watch the scene, like the action scenes that I really like, like the chase scene with, with um, DK and Han. Um, the initial uh, scene where um, Sean destroys the car, destroys <laughs> Han's car in the drift. Like, I, I will watch those scenes again. <laughs> yeah. Um, for you. But I don't know if I would watch the movie in, like, in totality, at least not initially. Like, it, it, I would have to wait a while for me to be like, okay, I, I can watch, like, the whole movie again. Oh, yeah, I'm saying wait, too. So that, that's a pretty good score. Like, what, what was your thoughts on Tokyo Drift, Andy? What's your score? Uh, I was actually a little shocked how much when I was watching this, I was invested in the characters and all that. And I was like, you know, I had did a pause break and I was like, damn, I'm already 40 minutes in. Holy shit. <laughs> oh yeah. This movie's a but yeah, I, I love the action fast. in this movie. Love the racing in this movie. I okay. love the soundtrack as well. I just, other than the obvious one song, I said something about. <laughs> <laughs> hey man. But uh, yeah. What it is. I, I would definitely give this what you gave it an eight. And, but but I will say this is something I could go back to because I, I love the style in this movie. I love how it unlocks that inner child that had me that love me for speed and all that stuff. I just love everything about this, dude. So Okay. I, I, I can see that. It's it's just for me, it's not like it's a slow movie with paced wise, although pace wise is pretty good. I mean, this movie goes pretty quickly in my opinion, but it's, it's not a super like high energy like we're into this big bombastic shit i, I don't know because I, I guess i was more, i started this franchise more with the later movies where you know we're seeing these big set <laughs> pieces so that's where like coming back and starting now it's it's very difficult to kind of maybe want to go back to those movies again so i kind of like what you said here if i want to watch the movie again it'll, it'll probably have to be if i'm marathoning for the 11th movie or something like that it has to be like way down the line for one of those ones who you get they're in space <laughs> yeah like we're, when they're in space or in mars space. or whatever so i i can't watch it again now like i want to watch the movie again so so that, that's the unfortunate part but i guess we all agree this movie's enjoyable i guess henry's like the, not the most favorable with this movie but i guess he kind of agrees it's pretty pretty good right yeah that's his merits yeah, it's, it's like it's just stuff. I mean, the character has a brick, a personality of a brick. <laughs> uh, I'm from America, you know. I'm from a race somewhere very I'm from, vague. Uh, <laughs> I can't even say where I'm from. Drive. I can't drive drift Donkey Kong. <laughs> Shit. Like, dude, they don't even, they don't even say in the beginning of the movie, like, where's that high school? I was like, is this California? I don't know. It looks like California. I don't think they say. I had they to reverse it. I was like, shit. It's in they do nowhere that town. fucking pinata. <laughs> right? Oh my god, that fucking pinata, man. Oh my god. Yeah, some stuff in this movie do not age very well. I will say that. And uh, some weird stuff was supposed to be but Yeah. Well, I, I wonder. I wonder but, if you're not supposed to like those guys, though. I, I feel that's the way it was shot. You're not supposed to like them at all. Oh, sure. yeah. Oh, for, for sure. Because, yeah, again, like from the get go from that school, that school was terrible. Man, I don't want to go to that school. I don't know where that is, but I don't, don't want to go there. It looks completely it's terrible. Like metal detectors from the entrance already. And people. Mom, let's move. Teachers, <laughs> teachers, teachers sleeping or they're getting harassed and bullied and tortured by students no nah, man i don't want to go to that school it's just fucked up i'm not going there. what school is that dude 
somewhere in California look like I don't know where the hell that was I'm like where is this but I don't know so yeah I guess we really enjoyed this movie there's a lot of fun I want to ask the people in the audience what do you guys think of Tokyo Drift do you guys like the movie did you not like the movie what parts did you like what parts did you not like let us know in the bottom of the comments let's discuss it and where would you rank this so far in these thirsty movies do you agree with us or is it completely different I don't know what do you, what do you think so thank you again Henry thank you again Andrew, I know Henry, you have nothing to plug. You don't want people to follow you. Like, stay away from Henry. Do not contact him at all. <laughs> but, but Andy, what do you have? Try to, to try to sell shit. <laughs> try to sell, don't try to nah, sell. G, don't try to sell <laughs> drawers that didn't come out. Don't try to sell them iPods that are broken <laughs> with no refunds. Do not try to. Don't Let sell you know, to him no, don't don't sell Don't don't even try to come up with your ink like your green Hulk car. Don't try to come up with that. Leave Henry alone. But Andy, like, what do you have anything to plug? Your socials? See it. All right. So you can find me. Hello there, people. You can find me on Andrew Stittle at YouTube.com. I do the Andrew Stittle podcast, do movie reviews. Next week, my friend and me and Alvaro are doing another podcast. Look out for that next Friday. Oh. Ooh. And what about your uh, your steadily mentally? Oh yes, as well steadily mentally on Facebook as well. This is my awesome. music. Page. There we go. There we go. So please subscribe to his channel, follow him on Facebook on that page. And so yeah, I gotta say, I guess stay tuned for next week. We're gonna do Fast and the Furious. They took the thuds away. So it's just Fast and Furious. <laughs> thuds out. It's just thuds <laughs> out. Thuds out. So it's Fast and Furious. So. I'm excited for that movie. I, it's been a while. It's, is that is that is that is that kind of that mysterious movie? Is like, I don't know how this fits well in this chronology and in this tone of movies, but I'm very excited to see how it fits. So, cannot wait for that. So please stay tuned for next week. My name is Satyan Sierra. His name is Andy, and his name is Henry. Nos dos seguimos aquí.